Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Celestia Students, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a green-white Magecraft deck spearheaded by Mavinda, Students Advocate, the 3 mana 2 3 legendary bird advisor with flying, and has a free activated ability that we can activate only once each turn, but that also includes the opponent's turns, and then we can cast an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard, and it has to target one of our creatures, otherwise we have to pay 8 additional mana, which is probably not going to happen, so Mavinda is great in combination with all our cheap instants and sorceries in this deck that target our creatures and are also great at enabling magecraft for our other creatures. So let's take a look at those creatures at 1 mana. We've got the full playset of Clever Lumamancer, a 1 mana 01 human wizard with magecraft, giving it plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Clarion Spirit, also great in combination with Mavinda as we'll easily be able to cast multiple spells in the same turn to generate those spirit tokens. And then those tokens will also work very nicely with our Leonin Lightscribe, which has a magecraft ability giving our creatures plus one plus one until end of turn. And then the main appeal for playing green is the addition of Dragon's Guard Elite, a 2 mana 2 2 human druid with Magecraft putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And for 6 mana, we can double the number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on Dragon's Guard Elite, which can make it a very deadly creature indeed. Then taking a look at some of our non creature spells to enable Magecraft, at 1 mana, the full playset of Defiant Strike gives one of our creatures plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn and draws a card. And then very similarly, we have two copies of Charge Through, gives our creature Trample until end of turn and draws a card great in combination with a large Dragon's Guard Elite especially, and also has a bit of synergy with a ram through, so we can potentially deal damage to the opponent if our creature has trample and has more power than the opposing creature has toughness, and a ram through is the main removal spell in the deck, as well as some sideboard cards that we can potentially learn for. Then we also have two copies of Fight as One, can give a human plus one plus one and indestructible, and a non-human plus one plus one and indestructible, and we do have a decent mix of humans and non-humans, with the Elite and Lumamancer being humans, and then the other creatures being non-human. And then we also have the full playset of Snakeskin Veil, puts a plus one plus one counter on our creature and gives it hexproof until end of turn, so it can potentially foil a removal spell from the opponent. And then we also have two copies of a Guiding Voice, a sorcery that puts a plus one plus one counter on target creature and also lets us learn, so it gives us access to our sideboard lessons. We are also playing with the Gigantha the Wellspring as our companion, so that takes up one of our sideboard slots. And then we also have a copy of Academic Probation, potentially prevents a creature from blocking or we can prevent our opponent from casting a devastating sweeper for a turn to potentially get across the finish line. We've got environmental sciences to grab an extra land if we're missing our land drops. Reduced to memory can be a removal spell, and despite having Gigantha's companion, we can still play reduced to memory in our sideboard since it's not in the main deck. Then we've got expanded anatomy to put two plus one plus one counters on target creature, and it also can potentially be bought back with our Mavinda out of the graveyard, so a great lesson for this deck. And then containment breach can deal with artifacts or enchantments, and finally mascot exhibition if the game drags out, especially useful against control decks that might be able to deal with a lot of our creatures. And then finally we've got two copies of Show of Confidence, a two mana instant, and when we cast a spell we get to copy it for each other instant and sorcery spell we've cast this turn, and we can choose new targets for the copies, and then we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, and it also gains vigilance until end of turn. So this is kind of like playing a storm card, which is very synergistic with Magecraft, which also triggers off copies of spells, so this can be incredibly devastating and a great finisher for the deck. And then a mana base consists of two copies of Temple of Plenty, usually don't have a ton of things going on on turn one besides potentially playing Lumimancer, so we don't mind having a few tap lands, and this can help us try to set up our different synergies. And then four copies of the Green-White Pathway, seven forests and nine basic planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand is an easy mulligan. No creatures, this is better. We'll get rid of one ram through. And then hope to pick up some more cheap magecraft enablers. Go and fetch a swamp, get to play turn one Lumamancer. Go on black green with Finn the Fangbearer. So this is the Death Touch tribal deck. Alright, so if I play the elite next turn I could ram through and kill Finn, I guess same goes for Lightscribe, really. And we are stuck on single white, so it's probably more important that I play the Lightscribe here. So next turn I can maybe go Ram through plus Lumimancer or Elite plus Lumimancer. 
We'll take the one. And the two poison. Now our opponent having lots of death touch creatures doesn't bode well for our plan of going big with a Dragon's Guard Elite. We'd much rather go wide with a Clarion Spirit. A Grim Dancer. Gonna be a 3-3 with Death Touch and Menace. So we could ram through either Grim Dancer or Finn. Uh, or we could play Elite Lumamancer first and then next turn go for it, which I like more. And then probably not worth it to attack with a Light Scribe. Even though I could bluff an attack and then if they block we can ram through Finn and trade for the Grim Dancer, which wouldn't be terrible. But I think I still want to get these Magecraft creatures in play first. So we can set up a bigger attack next turn. Opponent attacks, we'll take it. Up to six poison now. Moss Viper, 1-1 one, one Death Touch. And our opponent might be keeping up their own ramp through, which is bad news. Or they might kill the Light Scribe now. Could play the Elites, attack with a team, and then we're fine with a trade for Moss Viper and just ram through Finn. Or we could ram through the Grim Dancer if they block with the Viper. We'll see. Start by attacking. And at least now we can get punished by an opposing ram through at instant speed. Opponent's just gonna take it. In that case, should maybe take out Finn since we're already at 6 poison. Alright, so as the dust settles, we've got a decent board presence, just need more Magecraft enablers. Another Grim Dancer, this one might get Lifelink. Nope, another Death Touch Menace and a Blight Blade. So they've got a lot of Death Touch creatures on defense. So do we trade the elites for some death touch creatures? Feels pretty bad. I think we gotta wait for maybe a charge through for trample or some other interaction. Two menace grim dancers attack. Yeah, still gotta take it here, I think. If we find a Guiding Voice, we can get Probation to remove a blocker. So that could be effective. Well, speak of the devil. So, gotta hope they don't have another ramp through. So let's say we Guiding Voice a Lumimancer or Elite. Trigger Magecrafts. Then we get Probation. Remove one of the blockers so they can block one of my creatures. Get to trigger Magecraft twice, so Elite hits for 5, and Lumimancer hits for 4 each. So that's Xaxes. Gotta go for it. Just double checking if there's a better option, but I don't think so. All right, sweet. That was a close one here against the Death Touch deck. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice hand featuring Show of Confidence, which is particularly powerful with our Light Scribe. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one mountain. Hmm. Don't think I want to put my Light Scribe in harm's way, but on the other hand, 
we don't have double white, so I wouldn't be able to necessarily play Light Scribe and keep up Fighters 1 afterwards. Which makes it pretty tough. Our opponent does seem to be holding something. So most likely a shock. So puts us in a pretty tough position. But we'll have to hope to draw planes pretty much. Opponent is red white, taps out for Alpine Watchdog. Okay. Could cycle Defiant Strike. Or we hold it. Planes is good. Now we can play Light Scribe, keep up Fighters 1, and then play around removal. And then next turn potentially unleash a bunch of spells. Spellbinder gonna have a look. Sure. That's gonna make the show of confidence a lot less effective. Snakes can veil the draw. So we can attack with the team. So we want to keep up fight as one if possible. So maybe just go for Snakeskin Veil on the Lumomancer, keep up Defiant Strike. If we play Show of Confidence, we're tapped out, so that's too risky. And this way we keep our Finders 1 available. And I want to hold the Defiant Strike so we can potentially combine it with Show of Confidence or just get more damage from our Magecraft triggers. Bolt Hound is fine. And then we also couldn't put Gigant in hand since we wanted to keep up Finders 1. Take 5. Mavinda, an excellent draw. So we can attack. See what they do. Opponent takes it. So I think we'll just deal three, play Mavinda, and keep up Fighters 1 once again. There's We Note, unfortunately. So let's see what that reveals. Houndmaster, which can grab more dogs. So maybe they didn't have a shock after all, and we missed out on quite a bit of damage in the meantime. Spellbinder is annoying. So probably going to have to cast one of our spells just to get it in the graveyard so it's cheap with Mavinda at least. And then I get to block an opposing creature as well. So let's go with a Defiant Strike, maybe. And then we'll pump Mavinda, sure. And then we can block Bolt Hound or Watchdog. Let's go with the Watchdog, so they have fewer creatures on defense. Alright. So can we deal 14 damage? I can charge through twice. Probably start by just casting it on one of our ground creatures. Lumimancer is going to potentially deal more damage. Land means I can show off confidence as well, which would get two copies. I could instead cast another charge through, and then at the very least fight as one. That feels better than show of confidence, and I could draw a two mana show of confidence in the process. Alright, we'll attack. So do we get enough damage with our Finders 1 now? I think we just about get there. Ah, 
Alright, so close game here against Red White Winota. We played around a potential burn spell, which did slow us down, but we luckily had just enough in the end. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Double Lumamancer. Find us one with both humans and non humans, and a Mavinda to get them back. Facing a Temple of Triumph. Alright, now that we have four lands, that's plenty, so we just want to find more cheap instants to go with our Mavinda to enable Magecraft. And let's see what we're up against here. Planes into Alsade, so. Maybe a Winota deck. So no real point in attacking. We'll just play Lumomancer and keep up fight as one. Opponent, three colors, and a Satessan Champion. Alright, so it's more of an enchantment deck then. Well, Satessan Champion could be problematic. So we'll attack. And then our opponent most likely takes it, and we'll just cast some spells here. Mavinda, more impactful if we can play Mavinda and cast a spell out of the graveyard right away. Elites, pretty nice, so we'll probably just uh, deal for play elites. Shields down on find us one, but I don't expect much damage based removal out of an enchantment deck. Rune of Might on the Alsade. Opponent draws two cards, so looks like they're going all in on the Alsade and. Yeah, huge lifelinking creatures can be tough to race, and our deck doesn't have much in the way of removal. So we'll have to try and stay back and set up some blocks with Fight as one. Although that's probably not going to work out well for us, since we just let the opponent play more enchantments. They don't have to attack, and eventually they will overpower us. So this is not looking good. But best I can do is pass... End of turn, maybe Cycle of Defiant Strike. So the opponent's deck, pretty similar to ours in terms of playing a few creatures and then enhancing them, kind of going all in. But I think they're going to be able to go over the top in this case, especially thanks to the ult that glitters. Runeforge Champion. So this deck might also be playing with Goldspan Dragon, Showdown of the Skulls. Kind of the Runestorm deck we featured a while back. Rune of Might on Champion. And I'm kind of hoping they attack and we can trade. Another Rune of Might. We can trade for one of their creatures now. I'll say it has lifelink, which is annoying. Although they could easily play the white rune to give lifelink on the champion, and the champion draws cards. And then we'll block with everyone, see how they line up blocks before we cast our fight as one. Alright, so... Human, non-human... So we actually don't lose anything. Get to untap. Have to use Mavinda right away here just to find more action. And then who do we target? A Lumimancer perhaps? Another land. And then we'll just put Gigant in hand, keep up fight as one. And we can eventually start doubling counters on Elite. Although that's a very long-term plan. So 
It's gonna be a second ult that glitters. Yeah, that's probably too much for us to handle now. Make that three. 17 powered Alsade with Trample. And a Season Hellblade. So, looks like we're dead. I guess we're not dead yet. Survive it for life. But another Moven off the top doesn't help, so we're out of place. Can double the counters on our elite. Just because. Points at 44 in the meantime. And there's a shot on all the skulls. Finds a Storm Herald. Especially effective against the mill decks, but also gonna be nice here to get back a few runes. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Got the synergy between Clarion Spirit and Light Scribe. Bonnet on Black White, there's Mavinda. So, play a Light Scribe first. And land is great. Hit for four. Mavina can help us replay spells out of the graveyard. Uh -huh, I see opponent's uh, black-white angel deck. Well, we can ram through the aspirant here. And then... Can we kill our opponents? This is 12, and find us one would add 4, so yeah, that's 16 exaxes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. Clarion Spirit backed up by Mavinda to cast two spells in the same turn, facing a Zagoth, a Triome. Do we want a Snakeskin Veil? I kind of like it. Way to protect our creatures. And then can get it back with Mavinda later. So Triome points towards a more controlling deck where we can expect a removal spell or two, where a Veil can come in handy. Although, yeah, it's uh, a Sanctum deck as it turns out, so we want to find our Guiding Voice to find Containment Breach, although it's gonna take a while to set up. And our opponent's probably packing some sweepers, so... Ram through not particularly great here, since the opponent doesn't play any creatures. So... The risk of going Clarion Spirit into another spell is that our opponent next turn has Extinction Event to wipe our board. The alternative also isn't great. It's just Mavinda and Pass after hitting for two. So maybe we just have to hope they don't have Extinction Event, otherwise we don't stand a chance this game. And we'll play Clarion Spirit's attack, see if there's a response, and then maybe charge through. Alright, they have a counterspell. 
that's fine. So now we feel safe casting the charge through making a token and hitting for two. So the fact that they countered our Clarion Spirit implies they don't have Extinction events, so we can try to ignore it. Kallax Destiny's Hand can find more enchantments or can take out Clarion Spirit here. All right. It's going to make a future Guiding Voice even more impactful. And then this turn we can play Mavinda, keep up, Snakeskin Veil, as well as potentially end of turn, cast a charge through just to draw a card. It is time for me to depart. Find as one could also save our creatures from a sweeper like Shatter the Sky or Doomscar. As our opponent foretells, could be a Doomscar, could be maybe an Alrun's Epiphany or another Saw It Coming. And a Fae of Wishes. Alright, we've got a, a ramp through target now. Send of turn, activate Mavinda. And just draw a card here. Alright, so we'll play the Light Scribe. And then... I could Snakeskin Veil, put counter on Mavinda. And then ramp through. Although then we'll be tapped out of the Fighters 1. So maybe that's not the best idea. So we'll just attack. Opponent chumps, so now we can activate Mavinda on Snakeskin Veil. Put count from the Spirits. And thanks to the Light Scribe we get to take out Fail of Wishes. And we still keep a Fighters 1 in the event of a uh, Sweeper here. It's going to be a Raven's Warning. Okay. Can ram the 1-1 one, one bird. And then we'll hang on to the Fighters 1. So can we kill our opponent? If I play Light Scribe, ram through and find us one, I think we have enough. Yeah, this should be enough. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play and we're missing green mana. So that's kind of the main strike against this. There's no creatures I can play early on. I could potentially cycle the fine strike on an opposing creature, but that's not ideal. We'll take a mulligan and this is much better. And then do I keep Lumamancer as a second creature or do we kind of go all in on this Dragon's Guard Elite? Do we have a Snakeskin Veil to protect it? Hmm, maybe I'm better off keeping two creatures and then which cantrip do we get rid of? Maybe the charge through. And then another guiding voice isn't bad. Yeah, I'll keep it. Depending on the matchup, we may or may not run out the elite on turn two against turn one mountain. We have to be aware of Stomp, so probably not worth it. And then I'll keep up some interaction. Alpine Houndmaster, alright, so red-white dark tribal deck. So less likely to have some burn spells to kill the elite. Houndmaster doesn't search up anything. Okay. Well, uh, I guess we'll play Elite and Pass. It's gonna be a Cargan War Leader, so I guess it's more of a warrior deck than a Dark Tribal deck. Makes sense. All right, so we can Guiding Voice the Lumimancer. And then we probably search for 
environmental sciences here, so we can hit our land drop next turn. And then I'll attack. If they block, we can snakeskin veil. Next turn, sciences for probably a forest. Outlaws Merriment, okay. Can potentially learn for Containment Breach to destroy it. So we're gonna stick to the plan here. And attack. Bone on Chumps, that's fine. Hero of the Nyxborn makes a soldier token. So opponent's got a lot of tokens now, so we're gonna have to eventually fly over with Mavinda perhaps. So here we could Guiding Voice and Containment Breach the Merriment, which I don't hate. Although we will go shields down on Snakeskin Veil, vale, but we've got more threats in hand, so that's probably fine. So let's Guiding Voice say the Lumamancer to diversify our threats a bit. Get Containment Breach and we'll blow up the Merriments. And attack. Elite already is 7-7. Seven, seven. Showdown of the Skulls, gonna draw some cards. Finds a couple lands and a veteran. So this is where finding a charge through to give our creatures trample would be quite nice, although Mavinda's already quite powerful here. And doesn't seem like her opponent has much in the way of removal, so I feel relatively safe tapping out instead of keeping up Snakeskin Veil. Vale. And then what do we go for? I guess a Guiding Voice makes sense. And we'll guide the Lumancer. And then we can learn for maybe a Probation, maybe Anatomy. I guess Anatomy on Mavinda is pretty nice. Opponent is down to four. So next turn we could Anatomy Mavinda and have Snakeskin as backup. War Leader puts a counter on the Hero, that's fine. Savai Thundermane. It's a lot of uh, red-white gold cards, although I'm not seeing a ton of synergy between them. So we'll go for it. And attack with the team. Alright, so we got to see our green-white Magecraft deck in action. And yeah, Mavinda especially a nice card for the deck, letting us Gain incremental card advantage by replaying cheap instants out of the graveyard. And then both the green and white bump spells combine nicely to give us an overall pretty synergistic and powerful aggro deck. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.